I don't think we, we thought we'd necessarily grow this quickly when we first started. Um, my name is John Hammersley. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Oakleaf. I'm a mathematician and physicist by training. I really wanted to move into something which was more cutting edge and more kind of real world. I worked on the world's first driverless taxi, which is now in operation at Heathrow Airport. And I was actually there that I met John, my co-founder of Overleaf. I'm John Lees Miller. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Overleaf. I always liked sort of building things. You know, if you have a problem, I think you shouldn't just try to solve it once. You should always try to build a tool that'll help you solve it a lot of times. Um, and sometimes you can even write a tool that helps lots of people solve things. Um, so that's very much what happened with Overleaf. I was basically a PhD student at the time, and I was writing papers with collaborators both in my group and at labs in other places, and we just didn't have a good way of collaborating on the papers that we were writing. It was interesting to see for me, because you know I wrote this tool to help me do things in the lab. Um, the first document on Overleaf that was written by someone else was nothing to do with science. It was actually a wedding invitation. So I, I sort of at that point realized that, hey, you know, we've, we've actually built something here that's not just for us. You know, this is really something that a lot of people might find useful. Um, I certainly didn't expect them to write wedding invitations, but hey, uh, it may still be the only one. It went on, it was on the internet, other people found it, and you know, here we are today with 200,000 users. So one of the the first functions we put in um, was a real-time collaborative editor. Um, so it works in the same way as other collaborative editors, isn't it? It merges all the changes seamlessly, so you can edit at the same time, and we handle all those conflicts. The second major um, feature was that it gives you an automatic preview of the typeset output, so you can see what your final document's going to look like alongside your, your input. So this has led on to some work we've done with publishers to make it possible for their editorial teams to access documents and leave feedback. We're also now talking with institutions about how this can help, for example, by providing their library um, services with more information on, on who's collaborating with who between departments and with other universities. So we're now working with Stanford University in the US who are rolling this out across their campus and we're getting a lot of great feedback on how this ties in with their system. So it's really building on the publisher and institutional links to make it accessible to more people. So we first met digital science through Figshare. So because Figshare was an online repository for data sources and a way of publishing your work online, um, they had an API that we could link into, and so one of our first partnerships was linking Overleaf with Figshare. John and I are both scientists, and so we understood the researcher and the author side of of the problems that we were solving, but there were these other problems in open access and publishing, which digital science had the experience and knowledge and connections with um, to help us grow faster and, and grow further. So we kind of really saw it as not only investment in financial terms, but also their experience in publishing and working with institutions on, on solving the bigger problems. And that's one of the reasons that we've sort of taken on investment in digital science is that in order to sell to larger people, you need to attain a certain scale, um, you need to attain a certain maturity, and I think digital science is helping us do that. So you have eight teams plus the central digital science you know, um, team who are all trying to make science better and science communication better. So it's great to be able to bounce ideas off people and just be in an office where that's the environment rather than you know, everyone turns up at nine and, and leaves at five. I think one of the core things that digital science does well is that it always focuses on researchers and solving problems that people have. Um, so whether that's a problem with getting your research out there or for us a problem with sort of how do I write up my research, how do I collaborate with all of these people that I need to collaborate with, um, digital science just kind of understands that that's what we're focused on is making researchers' lives better.